Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today I'm going to talk about how AI, artificial intelligence, LLMs are going to replace jobs. And I know that's a big claim, but what I want to do is just give you an inkling of how this is possible. Uh, there are multiple paths to this, but the reason I want to do this demonstration is because I've had conversations over and over with folks that believe that AI is just another fad, something that'll disappear like the metaverse or blockchain. And to me, I, it couldn't be any more clear. I, I think there is a very viable, obvious path, one that exists even today for a lot of desk jobs to be automated through AI, through GPT, through Gemini, through Claude, any of those systems. In fact, I'd say a lot of them, albeit with a bit of elbow grease, uh, can be automated uh, right now. Now, there are some crazy numbers out there. I think, you know, IMF, McKinsey, uh, they all have their different numbers that go anywhere from, you know, 10% to 70% of jobs being uh, heavily impacted. Um, what that actually means, whether we'll lose jobs, whether there will be new jobs created, I, I don't know. But what I do think, and I sincerely believe, is that a lot of the menial digital tasks that we're doing today can and should be automated very, very easily. Um, and, and it's so simple that you are going to have regular people uh, start automating tasks. You don't need a team, you don't need you know, an implementation team, you don't need a vendor to do all of this. Somebody just has to run it through ChatGPT. Now I know those are very, very big claims, um, but what I'm going to do is show you at least a, a simple demonstration of how all this works. I suspect this video is going to be geared towards folks that don't normally uh, watch my channel. Uh, so I'm going to go back to a bit of web development basics here. Um, so much of our work can be done on a web page. Now granted, yes, you can run Outlook on your computer as an application. You can run it on your phone, but many of these apps can be run uh, on a web page, whether that's Office, whether that's Google, Outlook, um, you can use Confluence and Jira, lots and lots of tools are run on a browser now. And what happens with a browser is that you, you see this visual representation of the page. You see all of these buttons, uh, this is a text box, um, drop downs, all of this is actually code. And so if you use any browser, uh, you should be able to go into the tools or settings and check out developer tools. Here, um, under elements, you're going to see the HTML code. And uh, just for fun, you know, we could inspect this section and you'll see that this is the code that, that creates a section. And maybe we can look at the images here uh, you'll see that there is an SVG uh, sprite here that creates the image. Um, long story short, this is all code, and this is something that computers readily recognize. Now, the other cool thing about web pages is that in the same developer tools section, you have a console. This is somewhere where you can type commands programmatically to interact with this web page. And so, you know, uh, we can go console.log, uh, hello, and that will just print hello in the console here. Uh, not a particularly useful function, but um, let's say we go print, uh, you will see a print dialog pop up. And so you can do lots of different things right in the console, including clicking, typing, uh, moving uh, pages. And so I think you're starting to see where I'm going with this, hopefully. What we can do is copy this entire page 
ask ChatGPT to create some console code to interact with it. So let's talk about how we can do something useful now. Uh, something that is very common in the workplace is taking information from one place, transforming it, and moving it to another. Here, I just have a fake name generator. You can imagine this is coming in a form, a PDF file. It might even be a picture. Uh, I'm just going to copy, well, no, let's not do that yet. Uh, what you have is all sorts of information here that is uh, potentially useful for you uh, for the next thing you have to do. So once you gather all this information, you can go into another form that you want to fill out. Here, this is just a sweepstakes form. That's the fastest one I could find. And you can see how uh, a lot of that information um, from this fake name generator can be put in here, right? Really simple. Now, you know, this isn't gonna take long if I was to just copy and, and paste, you know, the address here and all of that. But if you were to do tens, dozens, hundreds, thousands of these, um, this is prime for AI. And so let me just show you very, very quickly. We're going to go inspect this page again. We're going to see the whole element. Copy. Uh, oh, uh, I'm just going to go edit as HTML. Copy this whole thing. I'm going to bring it into this page right here and say, um, Okay, so um, what I've asked is for uh, Gemini or any AI to write some JavaScript code. And that was what we were doing over here in the console. Um, that's not what I was looking for, but um, what we were doing in the console. They, the console uses JavaScript code um, and then I'm going to talk about how this is specifically for a web browser console to automatically fill out this form. Uh, I asked it to use just some dummy information first. Let's break it down into steps. And what I'm going to do is paste all of that um, HTML in here. I'm going to just click chat. And keep in mind this uh, this is big AGI. It's just handy for me because uh, I, I could have chosen GPT-4, uh, Claude, whatever, but um, I'm using Gemini 1.5 for now. So that is excellent. Uh, we can try this out very quickly. Go into console and you will see that this form is filled out. Okay, we'll just refresh a page, reset this uh, entirely. So that's a clean page again. Okay, next up is uh, can, can you rewrite the code to use this information instead of the dummy information you provided? Okay, now Gemini is again switching over. You'll see that instead of John Doe, they're using Samantha Smith. Uh, 2546 Fifth Avenue, this is all pulled out um, from here. Samantha Smith, 2546 Fifth Avenue, um, Alberta, I'm sure the phone number is correct, all of that stuff. So um, we can again copy and paste this into console. Oh, uh, what happened here? Okay, I'm just going to refresh. 
go back into console. And here we go. So we have pasted all of these correctly and then I could click enter. Um, this is just a really, really simple demonstration here. Um, some of these uh, LLMs are able to accept PDFs. So you, instead of copying and pasting from this page, we can just upload a file. Um, GPT-4.0 is now multimodal, which means that you can just upload pictures of, of forms as well. And so uh, you can snap a picture, ask it to do the same thing. And a lot of these uh, LLMs now, especially something like um, Big AGI, will allow you to pre-save these prompts in certain ways. Uh, I'm thinking chat GPT, GPTs, which I've talked about in previous videos, where it's really designed to do one thing. And so every time it's going to have that same header and what you're just going to do is paste this name over and over. Now, if you think that sounds cumbersome, um, you can always create a plugin in Chrome. They're not really hard to do. And so uh, instead of you know going back and forth between the tabs, you can build your own plugin to do all of this for you. You just paste a PDF, an image, anything into the plugin and it automatically puts out all the names, clicks a button, all of that, all completed. And so this is just one very simple path for AI to automate a lot of tasks. But what I think a lot of folks don't realize is just how um, AI is able to affect other systems. Um, a lot of non-technical people are thinking always it's just a chatbot. It is limited to that sandbox, it is limited to having that conversation with you. That's just not true. If you ask it to create code, you can give it permissions to run the code elsewhere through other tools. If you give it the ability to move your mouse, for example, as another test I did recently, uh, it could give you the coordinates of where to click on your screen. So I might upload a file of my desktop, a screenshot of my desktop, and ask it for the coordinates to click the submit button to fill out the CAPTCHA form to do all of these things. Huh. Um, now, granted, this particular form, you could have automated it in different ways, but what AI is really doing is making this really simple. Um, here, I didn't really need any technical background. This is not code I had to write, not code I had to debug, all of it just worked. And AI is just getting better and better at this. And so if you throw in uh, more complex websites like Outlook, like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, you might run into problems, but AI is moving so rapidly that I think in a couple of months, you're going to be able to do this kind of thing on virtually any platform. And that's why I do believe, uh, at least on the lower end scale, that 10, 20% of jobs can be uh, heavily impacted by AI because you can pull out so many things. Um, you got to keep thinking about what the next step is, what the next step is. Because after I pulled all this information, we could assume there is just another giant text box where I would write something about Samantha here. I might write a poem, I might write a performance improvement plan, I might write uh, a ticket or a bill or an invoice, anything. And this is just one more comment in that chain of conversation. Uh, just say, for you know the form agree box, can you uh, write a poem? Can you write uh, a description? Can you write something else? And AI is getting really good at being able to write texts as well, send out emails, do all of these things. Anyways, I'm gonna stop here, but I hope that was a little bit of a sampler of what AI can do and how you can take you know, a chatbot and start having it interact with your workplace, your workspace, what you're doing. Um, 
you know, it's not replacing factory workers today, but uh, so many of our jobs, our desk jobs, are things that we interact with digitally. And as soon as you touch digital, um, you can write code to manipulate it in all sorts of ways. Uh, being a little bit technically savvy is going to give you superpowers, I think. So this is a simple example, but if you are you know, a software engineer minded person, uh, you can take this example and make it much more sophisticated and do a lot cooler things. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Thanks for watching, and I hope you join us next week for another project. Thanks for watching. Bye.